Hi guys and welcome to today's video on powers and roots, part of the general mass course. It is as ever really good to see you. Darren here. Um, if you can, before I start, if you can head over to YouTube and click on that little subscribe button, I would be deeply grateful. Um, it just lets me know you're actually watching. And there is mathguru.com where all of these videos are absolutely searchable, downloadable. No, the notes are downloadable. Um, but they're all by textbook and, and really easy for you to find. Lots of stuff coming, exam questions. Um, hopefully it's, it's helpful to you. Okay, learning objectives. What is a power number? What is a square root? What is a cube root? And what are roots in general? Yes, very embarrassing story when I worked in a hotel once that somebody <laughs> asked me for uh, directions and I said, oh, you want a root? And um, I, yeah, British, hadn't quite realized in Australia how embarrassing that really was. <clears throat> yes, so I haven't really lived that down. There are many other embarrassing stories of my time in, in hotels. Um, and you're probably asking what the hell is he doing teaching then if you worked in a hotel? Again, whole new story, but uh, all on mathguru.com, funnily enough. Anyway, those are our learning objectives. In previous videos, we looked at bid mass, was my very first video on orders of operation, and then this uh, plus and minus stuff, this uh, directed number stuff. So I've put them there just to nudge your memory because they are going to come in handy now. But if you saw my previous video, did you see the last example, minus three squared? Well, it was a bit weird, wasn't it? Because we hadn't really taught you power stuff. I mean, maybe you remembered it from previous, but minus three with that floaty two. Now, that floaty two is called a power number. It is an index. It's a floaty number. Oh, there's all sorts of stuff it's actually called. Square number. But ultimately, when I have minus three with a floaty two, that floaty two tells me I am going to multiply what it's attached to by itself that many times. So floaty two is the same as writing minus three times minus three. Why did I write it twice? Because that floaty sign told me to do it twice. And we just know that that is a shortcut for multiplying all of those things together. So for example, if I had seven to the power of four, that's seven times seven times seven times seven. Why? Because I've got to write four of them and they have all got to be separated by times. Well, that's the end of the video. No, no, it really isn't. I've got some examples and stuff. There's a little bit more, but on the whole, that's what we're gonna learn. What is the square root? Again, the puns, they don't get any better. And in fact, I don't think the next few videos have any puns, to be honest with you. I think I ran out. But square root, well, firstly, yes, that there is a square root sign. Mathematically, there's a square root sign, but do you notice <laughs> it's, the tree has got square roots? I think I'm laboring this. <clears throat> all right, so let's look at powers first. When we raise a number to a power, we are writing something which can be quite long and laborious, but in a quicker way. So, for example, if I wanted to write this in a quicker way, yeah, uh, thankfully, maths allows me to do that. It's power stuff allows me to do that. You're probably asking, why would you want to write anything like that? Trust me, later on, it's coming in standard index form. But how many numbers do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 numbers. Now, because they're all times together, <clears throat> I can write this as 4 to the floaty 16. Now, again, I'm going to say the words floaty. It's just the way I've always taught it because it's a number what floats. But maths being maths is going to try and trick you by calling an index or it's going to call it a power. And there's another name that my brain is screaming at me to try and tell you, but uh, today not happening. But four to the power of 16. And again, listen to why I said that. Four to the power of 16. That there tells you floaty 16. So, powers and these floating numbers, oh my, yes, that's just me trying to tell you. So here are examples, as I've just said, so three squared. Can you beat me to it? What does it mean? Now, I don't want the number particularly. I mean, I suppose I could. If I wrote the word evaluate somewhere, um, then I would want the physical answer. Why? Because it's got the word value in it, so it wants a value. But three squared is the same as three times three. Just take that number and multiply itself two times. Three times three is in fact nine if we want to evaluate it. Four to the power of three. What would we do? Four times four times four. Now again, how do you do that in your head? Well, I tend to go four times four is 16. 16 times four is 32, 64. There we go. And then 10 to the power of five is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. It actually takes longer to write this here. Now, why did I have that? Because it told me to write five tens separated by times marks or sort of joined together by time signs. So that would give me 100, 
thousand. Now, one that we see ever such a lot is 10 to the power of six, which is actually one million. Show me the money. Now, there are more than floaty twos, as I've just shown you there. I've seen you a floaty three. I've shown you a floaty five. These all have names, all right? But the ones we use the most are the squares of numbers. So I said here, so if we had nine with a floaty two, that is the square of a number. That just means nine times nine, which is 81. The cube of a number is if we have a floaty three. So if I had two to the power of floaty three, that's the same as two times two times two, which is eight. Now, sadly, a lot of people get tricked. They think that two to the floaty three is the same as two times three and it is not. Please don't make that mistake or I will be rocking in a room gently, all right? When we raise something to the power of four, we call it, well, I call it to the floaty four. I'm sure it's got a name somewhere. Do we need to know it? No, because we'll actually just say something to the floaty four or something to the power of four. Read the language in the question. Now, what we do forwards, we can do backwards. And for the camera, that may have been the wrong way completely, but anyway. So if we know that four squared is the same as four times four, which is 16, I also need to know this thing here. Now that there is a square root. Really, we should have a little two there, but convention again says we don't need to write it. If ever you don't see a number there, imagine it's a two. And what that says now is what two numbers that are the same when multiplied together give me 16. So what number multiplied by itself, and it's got to be the same number, is 16. And obviously we know now that that's going to be 4. So the square root of 16 is 4. Now, to be honest with you, the square root of 16 is actually 4 or minus 4. And I'll come back to that a little bit later. No, let's do it now. All right? Because we know that 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. And we know that minus 4 squared is the same as minus four times minus four, which is also 16. So there is actually two answers when we have the square root of 16. Now, I think for this course, we're just gonna worry about the positive one for the whole thing, but you might want to show off to your friends down the pub, <coughs> uh, just saying, oh, I know the square roots is both positive and negative. So there is our square root sign. Now, whenever you do something, if I had the number 169, for example, I have to make sure that square root goes over the whole number. If I was to write 169 and just do that, it's actually wrong because the square root must cover the whole number. Just thought I'd throw that one out there. Yes, and again, it means what number, as I say here, do I multiply by itself to give me the number under the square root. So if I had the square root of 100, for example, what number that is the same as itself that I multiply twice will give me 100. Well, hopefully you realize that's the same as 10 times 10 or the square root of 10 times 10, which is just 10. Now, I think this notation here gets a bit confusing. So actually we write the value as 10. What about the square root of 81? What number multiplied by itself gives me 81? That's nine. What other one? Uh, root of 64 is eight. And there are lots and lots of others. I imagine if I said the square root of 144 is 12, you would agree. And as you should. Now, again, it's not a bad thing to have your summary book and have all of these written out. Finding square roots. Okay, well, square root of four. What number multiplied by itself gives me four? It's got to be smaller than four. And there's not many numbers smaller than four. So it's two because two times two is four. Uh, 16, 16, 16, up, ah, it's four, because four times four is 16, and we've already done that one as 10. See what we're doing here? It's freaking awesome. All right, cube roots. Now, what I said earlier was that when we have that little sign and there's no number, it's a two. And that two is important, because again, it says what number multiplied by itself twice gives me the answer. We now have something called a cube root. Yay! So what we're now saying when it's a cube no root is what number multiplied by itself three times will give me eight. Now that's gonna be a fairly small number in this case, yeah? Because let's, let's just backtrack it. I tend to do these in my head because I tend to go, well, okay, let's try one. What's one times one times one? One. What about two times two times two? And as it turns out that two times two times two is eight, one number multiplied by itself three times gives me eight. So the square, uh, sorry, the cube root of eight is two.
Cool. What about the cube root of 27? Again, believe it or not, it's going to be a fairly small number. And I'm going to tell you now that that's actually 3. Why? Because 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9. Times that by 3 gives me the 27. And finally, the cube root of 125. Well, you're going to probably say, ah, oh, it's going to be 4. Sadly, it isn't because it ends in a 5. So the fact is, again, it is actually five because we know that five times five times five well five fives are 25 and five twenty fives are 125. Now there are other roots as I have said before and again in this situation it's the number that makes it important. So this one here is the oh I want to say quintic root it's the root five it's the five root whatever the fifth root of <clears throat> who cares what number again 32 isn't that big a number so i'm suggesting start really slow so one times one times one times one times, well i'm just going to tell you now that it's never going to be one because it multiplies to be one what about two times two times two times two times two well i know that two times two is four i know that two times two is four and that's just times two i know that four times four is 16 times 2, and there we go, that gives me my 32. So we know that 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is in fact 32, so that's going to be 2. Another way to do it, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Use your fingers, that's what we've got them for. All right, now, burying in my math is a massive trick. We're going to try and trick you, and we'll have things written in different ways. Now, the square root of 4 can also be written as 4 to the power of one half. So whenever you see that power of one half, and I teach this in methods, I always say, just write it the other way around, okay? So they are exactly the same thing, and the answer would be two. Likewise, the cube root of eight is equal to eight to the power of one third. Do you notice this little two is the bottom number there of that fraction? This little three is the bottom number of that fraction there. They mean exactly the same thing, so please don't get tricked. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of another video on powers and roots. I'm really glad you joined me. Thank you very much. Hopefully, I'll see you in other videos. If you haven't already done so, can you just head over to my YouTube channel and subscribe? Thank you very much. Uh, MathsGuru.com, head over there and sign up. Greatly appreciated. Again, uh, downloadable notes, videos, uh, exam questions, all sorts of stuff to try and help you do your very best. I'm done. I look forward to seeing you again. Take care and please stay safe. Bye-bye.